Welcome, my name is Richard Tamba. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer by trade. I uh, have owned many businesses in the past. Been designing, developing transmissions now for the automotive industry for 31 years. Uh, to date, I have my name on more than 50 patents around the world. Uh, more than 50% of them are actually in production today in motor cars or boats or mining equipment. Many of my patents are actually sketched out onto uh, napkins from bars in places. And in fact, if you look at some of my patents, you'll find there's actually photocopies of those napkins in there where it shows the date and, and the signature when it came up. So, so make sure that, you know, it's, it's great to have all these ideas, but make sure you capture it somewhere so that you can, you can leverage off it later on. The mistake that a lot of uh, that entrepreneurs make is that they come up with a great idea and they're so excited about it, they want to tell the world. But don't go telling anyone about your idea until you've got it protected in some way. You need to sit down and say, OK, first thing is I think I've got a good idea here. Let's look if someone else has got it. Got it. So you go through and do a search on, you know, through the different patents and things and uh, have a professional come in and do that search for you. and then put some form of protection in place. That can be a patent pending, it could be a registered design, for example, uh, registering a process or something. Um, but definitely you need to have confidentiality agreements. Um, you need to make sure that any presentations and that you make, that you, you know, you protect, you've got whatever you're showing, the content protected. Um, and then sitting down and really determining, you know, how big is this and what's it really gonna cost us? If you find that that IP has applications in the health industry, for example, or maybe it has applications in multiple fields like automotive, mining, marine, and maybe in health, maybe it's a process or something, then, then once you know that and you, you get to understand what the true core of the IP is and then you can put a value around it, then you can start doing the trade-offs. Do I have the money to do this? Do I maybe develop the technology in an area which is going to cost me a little bit less but start to get a return early? Or do I need to go and get some help from outside? You know, do I need to go and get grants? Or do I need to go to one of the big multinationals and say, look, I've got this IP, are you interested? Uh, myself, I think it's always better if you can have the IP in something that you can make, something small or something you can sell, because then they have to buy it off you in some form and you can police how many they really make at the end of the day. When you're engaging professionals to help you with your IP protection, uh, with some patent attorney or otherwise, you need to have a good working relationship with that with that person or that corporation, because then you can pick up the phone and you can talk to them, and they get excited as well, you know, and they help to they help to generate, you know, you thinking more outside of the box too, you know. So I very much rely on on uh, my attorneys, patent attorneys, to you know to give me a heads up on what I need to do, how to protect it, and you know what's, what's the best way to approach it, for sure.